All right, and then let's talk about Mr. Did Not Report. So what's going on with uh, CD? Of course, we've got to talk about this, but and we don't, we're not going to go totally in depth. Uh, you can check out uh, Blog and the Boys for that. But what's what's the latest? Yeah, I mean, I apologize for, you know, the same things being true and obvious and redundant. But I mean, he didn't report um, for what it's worth. Um, so August 14th of last year was the day that the team restructured Zach Martin's deal and he got what he wanted. Um, so we're we're farther along here, right? We're, we're deeper down the rabbit hole um, than things got with Zach. We're not quite to the place that things reached with Zeke Elliott five years ago. That went all the way into September, um, just a couple of days, but still. Um, so this isn't unprecedented. These aren't quite uncharted waters, but this is this is real. This is serious. Um, now, for people who don't know, the Cowboys kind of split training camp. It's not quite 50-50, but um, they have their Oxnard portion, and then after they wrap up their kind of West Coast preseason activity, they return home to the Star in Frisco and, and conclude camp locally. Obviously, a lot of teams do it locally for the whole thing. Um, they're very close to, to wrapping up the Oxnard portion, and I would assume at this point that CD is not going to touch the field there in, in California, and so that's notable. That's significant. I mean, no matter how you want to look at it, and – I mean, he has the term leverage has been the most used one, obviously, as far as all content we've created all offseason because of everything. Um, I don't know that CD has the leverage that Dak Prescott has, but he has an enormous amount. He is coming off of, for anyone who's unaware, the most statistically successful season that any wide receiver has ever had in franchise history. And he achieved all of the important marks in 16 regular season games, that Saturday night game against the Detroit Lions with the crazy, speaking of did not report, um, on the two point <laughs> conversion attempt, um, that that was you know that was when oh, yeah. he surpassed all important measures. Uh, so this is, I mean, it's a very simple thing. They let the Justin Jefferson deal get done. People can whine and complain about how Jefferson is better. This is a supply and demand world. This is the market. I mean, we've equated it to houses and cars and all sorts of things to try to get people to understand, but some people still won't. Um, it seems like it's just a matter of getting it done. In fact, earlier this week. Adam Schefter said on NFL Live that everybody knows what the numbers should be. It's just a matter of getting it done. So this this seems I'm not going to be presumptuous enough to say that a almost two hundred million dollar contract would be easy to to sort of orchestrate. But yeah. it does kind of seem easy relative to the way everybody else tends to handle these things. So it's pretty much. Well, what do you think the strategy then is on the Dallas Cowboys side, on Jerry Jones side? I think that they still think that playing for the Cowboys holds an inherent level of value that isn't obtainable anywhere else, despite the fact that the most marketable player in the league plays in Kansas City, Missouri, and half, half the people in the world think that that's in Kansas, not in Missouri. Um, and, you know, we see teams in Cleveland, you know, that are, are – Baker Mayfield, when he was on the Browns, was a worldwide household name. Now, some of that's that he, you know, won the Heisman Trophy and things like that. But, I mean, still, I mean, Baker obviously played with CD. I mean, you, you know, you – it, it, it isn't that world anymore, right? Like the, people aren't taking less to play for the Cowboys. And yes, there are amenities and there are pros that come along with it in terms sure. of fame and adoration, but there are cons in that respect too. I mean, do a Twitter search for Dak Prescott's name and you will see the cons. Um, and so I, I, I think that they really think that despite 100% of history, they can quote unquote, win this negotiation. And it's worth mentioning that they have lost these over and over and over again. Dak Prescott is a prime example. They pushed him to the limit and he shattered his ankle and still got the richest contract in franchise history. Demarcus Lawrence is somebody who a lot of people think is overpaid and he might be relative to what he offers. I think he's a very good player. But he got the contract that he did because they placed the franchise tag on him. He had a remarkable season. He obtained all this leverage. The Des Bryant deal that happened nine years ago took until the 11th hour on the franchise tag deadline in the middle of July. He was on the, on the tag that year. I mean, over and over and over again. Zach Martin a year ago. I mean, the Cowboys think that they can outwit, outlast, outplay like it's Jeff Probst on Survivor, these guys. And they can't. They lose. And they're going to lose with CD eventually. They're going to lose with Dak eventually. And the amazing thing is that they're on the verge of going down this, not even slippery, this like outright soaking wet slope with Micah Parsons as well and allowing him to head into year four, obviously, without an extension himself. So is it just, do you think it's one of those things where it's like, well, like you said, everybody knows what the number is. They're probably, they're going to have to pay him. That They're like, well, let's just wait and make sure that, I don't know, nothing happens. 
like something weird happens. Like, I don't know, he slips and falls somewhere and I don't know. I don't know what else, because why else not do this unless you just, well, we know what the top, we know what the line is. We know we can get to here. So let's just wait it out and make sure that nothing weird happens in his camp before we give him all this money. If I had to come up with a level of logic that is behind this, because I, I have a difficult time finding it true to be that there's any, but yeah. if there is a, you know, a metronome beating of logic, so to speak, it's that they like the attention that that's the most logical conclusion <laughs> okay. to me is that they, you know, I mean, how I many times, that? Have, like how many times have you seen, you know, Josh Allen and Keon Coleman highlights this, this training camp period. None, you know, I mean, not like how many times is that leading, you know, first take or whatever, but how many times have people discussed this subject ad nauseum? And so yeah. I, I don't, you know, a lot of people think that the Cowboys are, are that like, attention seekers. And, and I don't, you know, I don't think that they're that way, the way I, I would think a lot of national perception is, um, but they are that way in some senses, you know, that they, 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 they are a horse or a zebra, I guess that can't change all of their stripes. And so there's no question that they enjoy this and the LOL thing, you know, a few weeks ago now or whatever, 10 days ago, whatever it was. Um, I think that they like this and, and I think that they're frugal. I think that they're cheap. And I, I think that they also, if you wow. want to give them the smallest sense of defense, um, the long-term deals that they have done early have burned them. Now that was with a running back in Zeke Elliott. That was with an off ball linebacker in Jalen Smith. That was with a right tackle in Terrence Steele last year. That was with Trayvon Diggs, which was smart. And we, we patted them on the back. Hey, well done. You know, look at your star corner coming off his third year. You paid him, you did the smart thing. And then he tore his ACL, you know? So I, I do think there's a little bit of like, man, every time we touch this stove, we burn our hands, you know, but again, you're, you're touching the stove. We're not asking you to touch yeah. the stove. We're asking you to, you know, touch the the parts of the oven that that aren't hot. Um, so they're using this weird warped logic to justify their lack of activity.